All right, hi everybody. So in this question we're told that we're going to let g of x equal f of 2x. Now, what that means right here, what I'm seeing, this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 half. Okay, so to go from f of x to g of x, f of x has been stretched horizontally by a factor of 1 half. Now, we're going to use the graph of g of x below. So this graph right here is g of x. To complete the table of values and plot the corresponding points to get the graph of f of x. Okay, so this is f of x. This is g of x. Now, it's going to make more sense to take a quick look at this graph first here. Okay. G of x is a stretch, is a horizontal stretch by a factor of one half to get of, of, of f of x here. So if I want to go backwards, I'm going to have to stretch this horizontally by a factor of two. Now a horizontal stretch by a factor of two is about the y-axis here. So let's take, a, let's take all my points here, and I'm lazy. I'm going to go for ones that are easy to work with. For example, the vertex here at two is going to go out to four. I'm going to make these points nice and big here. Um, what's another point here that's going to be uh, the same to me, for me here? Well, with a horizontal stretch, the y-intercept is going to remain invariant. Um, this point right here that was at 4, and it looks like it's going through a nice one right there, that's 4, that's going to pop out here to 8. So what I got here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight. I just want to make sure I'm reading that carefully there. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to have uh, room for a lot of these other ones here. Uh, this looks like it's going to be oops, like this. Uh, maybe I can, I can stretch another one here. Uh, this one here, it looks like it's going through, what is that, negative, negative 3 is going to end up going through negative 6. Yeah. Okay, well, that's, that's roughly correct there for f of x. Maybe not perfect, but it's going to be roughly correct here. So I, I have to take this thing and stretch it by a factor of, of 2. Now let's go back to our chart here. Um, when x is 0 for f of x, uh, let's actually, it probably makes more sense to look at the graph while we're doing this. If x is 0, y is going to be 2. Now that's because that won't change under either one of those transformations here. Now, look at the original here. If f is 1, okay, if f is 1, now the y coordinate, sorry, if x is 1, sorry, if x is 1, the y coordinate of, of this one was, was 1, so that's got to stretch out here, and I probably just didn't sketch that accurately. That's got to be going through 2. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I made a mistake here. In this case right here, uh, if f is 1, now remember, there's, that's where my, here's where my original goes through. Well, this is kind of awkward here. So this goes down like this. If x is 1 now, my y coordinate, just by the looks of it here, looks like it's going to be 3 halves. Okay? So 1 and a half here. Now, to get a y coordinate of 2, well, I've already established that 0 goes to 2, so they must be talking about this guy out here. Now, uh, originally, that was the point 4, 2, so now this has got to be the point 8, 2. Um, to get a, a y coordinate of 4, okay, well, a y coordinate of 4, that was either here or it was here. So it was either going to be 6, in which case that puts it out to, to 12, okay, or it was over here at negative 2, which then puts it at negative 4. So it's either going to be 12, 4 or negative, uh, sorry, negative 4, 4. That's a hard thing to do to, to ask the question in this way here, where I give you the, the transform graph and then ask you to create the original graph um, or a table for the original graph given the transformation that created this one. There's a lot of going back and forth there, but it is a good question.